Hello, short video about um, chainsaw cranks taking advantage of nice January sunshine. All these cranks here are from still MS362s. You'll forgive the shaky camera work as I'm shooting on a GoPro because that's what I got. But hopefully, this video will take you through some of the issues which can cause you in the uh, maintenance and rebuilding of all saws in general. Right, this is how the uh, crank sits in the saw. I'll show you some crank cases that this crank came out of in a minute. We've got the piston which runs in the cylinder. We've got a small end with its bearing on this gudgeon pin which Americans call wrist pins and that's more common in England now. Gear off. And you've got the flywheel on this left hand end, sits on this taper, and you've got the main bearings, left side, right side. Guide bars pointing this way. And the two main bearings are pushed against the, uh, the webs of the crank. On this end, you've got the cause of the damage of all these cranks, cause of the death of all these cranks, you've got wear on this end. I've got another video, which should post at the same time, which tells you about that. This bearing sits on there, and then the clutch drum sits on top with a sprocket, the retaining washer, and the E clip. And you can see this bearing is that bearing, and that makes with this crank. The green paint is deliberate, so this crank is dead, the chainsaw is dead. And you can probably see that this is extremely dirty, and if you turn it over. You can see there's a lot of discoloration on this bearing cage, which is plastic. And if you try and spin this bearing, it's relatively smooth, but there's a lot of play in it. It wobbles backwards and forwards. You shouldn't be able to do that. And that's because this oil seal, which is integral with this bearing, you can press them out. has um, got hot because of damage on this crank due to the clutch. The clutch has run hot, heat has transferred into this bearing and it's made the seal stiff and brittle. Got two lips here, outer lip which is basically a dust seal and then the inner lip which has a spring to back it up and that makes the seal on the crank. If they get brittle, if they get hard, then you can get gas flowing in through here and into the crankcase, and that can take dirt and other material in through the bearing, which can be seen on this bearing, which is slightly smaller out of a Husqvarna. And you've got dirt in here, this should be nice and shiny and clean. And if you spin it, you might just be able to hear that it's a bit rumbly. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. On the left hand end, slightly different arrangement. You have your bearing, that's the outer surface. And you can see dirt on there. But this bearing is actually in relatively good condition, although it's got dirt and grit in it. You can see that all the, the balls in their plastic case, not case, it's a uh, cage, are actually fairly shiny. So you might just about be able to clean this one up. And then the oil seal sits out board of it with its two lips and the garter spring which backs up the inner ceiling lip and this one has actually got GoPro probably won't pick it up it's got a crack here so these are consumables need to be um, replaced each time you rebuild a bottom end so what does this actually mean oh this is again out of a Husqvarna and you see that it's seized feel how stiff that is to turn and you can see all the grit and dirt and shite on that side. 
That's the outer face. That's the inner face. So, what does this mean? Dirt and grit and material, and also air, makes its way in here. And then into the crankcase. From the crankcase, it goes out the transfer ports, through the combustion chamber, and out. It can cause damage to the piston, but it certainly causes damage to these bearings and to the main, the um, big end bearing. And you can see that on this one. I'll change that and the sunlight hopefully pick up blue coloration here, which is where this bearing has been running hot because it's had dirt and grit in it. And also there may have been some lubrication starvation. And at this changes section, the metal should be this color not blue. It's got so hot that it's discoloured the metal of the steel surface and that indicates it's got to over a thousand degrees centigrade and that has changed the temper of the rod. This is more or less what it should look like as standard. If I move that hopefully the camera is focusing. This hasn't been specially cleaned, it's just been given a quick wash off. You can't remove that blue colour unless you remove the surface of the metal. You can either do that yourself or it actually happens on the wrist pin. You can see these bands of bright blue colour, but the areas where it rubs, the surface discoloration has been removed. That's the small end bearing. This is the gudgeon pin or wrist pin or piston pin, depending on where you come from and what you've been taught. Look at these other cranks. Don't drop. You see, this one again has that blue discoloration. This is not factory heat treatment. This is discoloration due to wear, lubrication, starvation, and damage. Friction, basically. And again, this one doesn't have that. But you might be able to see on this one, there are high spots, bright spots on the cage. This bearing, like the small end bearing, is caged. This is a metal cage, and this cage is, serves to retain the rollers in a regular arrangement so that wear is evenly distributed all the way around. If the cage breaks down, then the rollers can crowd together on one side of the, the bearing, and you get a hell of a lot of play. This one here, I've actually cracked this one, started to take the, uh, the crank apart. A lot of issues with movement, and you can see on the side, if this thing will focus, apologies if it doesn't, Again, you have wear on this cage, which is made of uh, of an alloy. Small end bearing is steel. And they make the small end bearing out of steel because they expect there to be heat transfer via the gudgeon pin from the piston to the small end. If we look in here, get the light right. We can see again another gudgeon pin with a very worn surface, bluing, and in the top of the piston you've got carbon buildup, which is inevitable because this show this sees unburnt mixture in the crankcase and the oil gets burnt onto the top of the piston before it all shoots out through the uh, transfer ports up into the combustion chamber where it gets combusted leaving a carbon on the top, inevitably. This one has got a reasonable amount of uh, wear on the piston. It's not picked up and you can just about see got these horizontal lines which are the machining marks. So this piston could be re reused. There's a little bit of blow-by past the rings or past the top ring little bit past the second ring and onto the exhaust face. Basically sits in the saw that way round with the carb on this side. 
This one here has a lot more blow by the piston, by the piston rings. And it's basically been thrashed from cold. Right, just to reinforce the issue of how this material gets in through into the crankcase past the main seals. This is the left hand crankcase from that saw that that crank came out of. You can see the amount of material in here. Maintenance would reduce the build up of this material. Even though this spins and tends to fling material out, it still builds up here. Find a clean finger. And you can see all that material. And that basically gets forced in here. All seal on this side is less robust than the seal on the other side. Which can suffer from the same issues and can also get hot, which makes the seal go brittle and exacerbates the tendency to inhale material. Oh, I do it with my clean finger. But this is straight from the, uh, the dismantling. This hasn't been cleaned at all. See material inside the crankcase on this face. This is outboard of the bearing and in here. The cure for this is basically better maintenance. Keep your saw clean. You can blow all this material off. Weekly is good. If you run your own saws, you probably have your own workshop and you can. Uh, do that in your workshop but you've also got an issue here and see that there's a fin missing so there's been some object been in here and let's take the fin out quite some time ago so I hope that's useful I want to recap a little bit if you see this kind of heat treatment heat discoloration this is not factory heat treatment what you can do if you don't want to dismantle your saw is to use 25 to 1 petrol in the crankcases with the bottom end intact and then by hand you can move the crank keep doing that for a few minutes tip it out into a clean container white porcelain is really good and if there's little tickly sparkly bits in there that sort of little Christmas decorations, all sparkly and lovely. Then you've got damage in here. Even if you haven't got a lot of play and movement, you've got damage. Ask yourself the question, is this saw worth the time and effort of a complete rebuild? Well, I hope it's been useful and interesting. Thank you very much.